Let's worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. And I just want to say welcome to all of you watching by Facebook. It's so good to have you here. Uh, please remember, Amber Virgin, Amber, if you're at home and you're watching, I know you usually do. We are praying for you. Uh, and those of you out there who say, Pastor, pray for me, please put your hand up so I can recognize and acknowledge you and take this moment to pray with you. By the way, this is the last of the series in Daniel, Daniel chapter 12. So we want to go out with a bang today, amen? amen? All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this day. This is the day that you have made, and we want to rejoice and be glad. And I just thank you and praise you that for all that you're doing here at Crestview. And we do just lift up all the other pastors in the area, Lord God. I pray that they would preach truth, which would lead to light and salvation. We lift up our nation before you, Lord God. There's so much division and disagreement. I, I just pray for a spirit of unity in this country. And I know that can come only through you. And Father, finally, I just pray for the message. I just pray you'd be with me and just empty me of myself, Father. Let that which is spoken, Father, be by the power of the Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everyone together said? Oh, be seated, thanks. Oh, man. Anybody here just like thirsty? Well, I got the water and you don't. It's great. All right, we're going to do Daniel chapter 12, but just a couple of announcements, especially for uh, second service. One, uh, what is February 14th? It's also preschool. Thank you. It's also preschool Sunday. And you can see some are more excited than others for that moment. Um, that's a big deal because we are expecting, in the in second service only, we're expecting about 100 or so visitors that day. And since that's second service only, this might be just a little bit full. So here's what we're gonna suggest uh, that you do. Number one, you can go into the overflow room, watch the service from there. Uh, number two, you can go to the first service. Uh, or um, number three, uh, you can stay home and watch online. That would be your options. Uh, the good news is, I don't know if you saw the news, but the Indiana Department of Health has lifted the majority of restrictions on spacing. All businesses can work at 100% capacity. Restaurants are still, I think, at like 75%. Don't know how long that's going to last, but we're going to take advantage of it, okay? So just so you know, we'll rearrange things to accommodate. I, I know some of you don't like maybe squeezing shoulder to shoulder. That's not quote unquote perfect social distancing, but you know what? There's, I can only do so much, okay? So if you're uncomfortable with that, if you're you know, uncomfortable shoulder to shoulder, you can watch, just don't forget, you can watch in the cafe, you can watch in the community room. There's plenty of places you can move in and about the building. If that's a problem for you, uh, we don't want to, we don't want to cause any division over this ongoing COVID issue. So we just make as much available uh, as we can but I would say, and of course I have to talk to the staff, but uh, we might be able to make room for some more people now, now that they've relived. I think we went, we were at red, and then there's orange, and then there's yellow. We went from red to yellow. So that's really, really good. We dropped down, I think we're at about 4% or whatever COVID positivity rate, which is excellent. They don't want to be over 10%. Uh, we're at about 4%. So that's good news. It really is. So yes. All right. How about Daniel chapter 12? You want to dive into that? All right. Let's say a quick prayer and then off we go. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these few moments. And I just pray as we wrap up this series, uh, Lord God, you would just give me the exact right thing to say through the power of your Holy Spirit. And I just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everyone together said. Amen. All right. Uh, so last year, it's a tough year. But there was one guy who discovered, eh, probably more than one, but there's one that I discovered on YouTube that I thought did a great job of highlighting the need for good news, which is what we're going to talk about today in Daniel chapter 12. There's one guy, you might recognize this. I took about a two-minute clip of this. It'll probably get removed from Facebook, I'm sure. But take a look at this clip and see if you recognize this. 
Good evening, everybody. Even though it is very clearly the afternoon, and welcome to SGN. John, what is SGN? That's a good question. For years now, I've been wondering, why is there not a news show dedicated entirely to good news? Well, desperately seeking my fix somewhere else, I reached out to all of you this week, asking, nay begging, for some good news. And boy, did you deliver. After reading those replies and the incredibly heartwarming stories that came with them, I thought, all right, enough is enough, world. Why not us? Why not now? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is your fault, and this is SGN. I'm John Krasinski, and if it isn't clear yet, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. And now, for some good news. And what a week for good news it was. Because yes, without question, we are all going through an incredibly trying time. But, through all the anxiety, through all the confusion, all the isolation, and all the Tiger King, Somehow, the human spirit still found a way to break through and blow us all away. Nowhere was that seen more powerfully than in the heroism of the global healthcare community. Now, these men and women are working day in and day out. They are putting their own health on the lines. They are putting their own lives on the lines for complete and total strangers. And they're doing it without the need for so much as a thank you. Well, luckily the thank yous came anyway. And the heartfelt appreciation was seen on a global scale. In Spain, police lined the street outside their local hospital and flashed their lights and applauded their appreciation for their hospital staff. I had to stop it right there because we could just keep going, couldn't we? But John found some good news. And yet there's good news all the time in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. By the way, you got you to gotta congratulate him for that. That had millions of views, right? CBS swooped in and offered him millions of dollars, and he turned right around and sold the whole thing, made a fortune off of it. If I could just get one of those ideas, right? <laughs> I mean, really, that would be great. But I just wanted you to see good news was on people's mind. Is that on your mind today by any chance? Do you want to hear some good news? Because sometimes when we've been in Daniel, it doesn't look like good news because Daniel prophesied a lot about the political realm and the military realm and some of it just looks like oh man but at the end of the day chapter 12 is about pulling everything together and giving you the believer good news would you like to hear it good because I'm about to give it all right we're going to divide this chapter, and here's some, here's, I'm going to start, here's good news point number one. This is only 13 verses long. Some of those chapters have been downright long, haven't they, with lots and lots of specific information, sometimes confusing, sometimes confusing even for me. And you know, sometimes when you go to research, and people have all these different opinions about the exact same thing, it makes it even worse. So at some point, you as a pastor, you have to decide, no, this is what I believe, I think this is what's right, you know, and do the best you can, because you're not always going to be right, right? Right, right, right? Okay. Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, and let me just say this, I, I could do probably a multiple week series on these four verses. Not today, but I could. That's how much is here. And I'd hate having to skip over some of this, I have to, but I just want to highlight some of these really amazing statements. Final chapter, beginning at verse 1. I love verse 1. Man, it says a lot. You may not see it. If you don't, I'll show it to you. At that time, what time? The tribulation. We haven't hit that time in history yet. Michael shall stand up. Can I just say every Christian ought to be excited at that statement. Why? Michael is the warrior prince of all of heaven. And when he stands up, it means he's about to strike. And who does he strike? God's enemies. And if you saw chapter 10 and 11, you saw for years and years and years, God's people suffered. But at this moment, the decree has gone out. Michael, stand up. And he does. And he's ready to move forward now and deal with God's enemies. 
Are you not looking forward to that day? Oh, man. You got, you got, oh, man. Oh. I'll take a drink here and pause on that one. Then I'm going to give you another chance. Are you not excited that God is going to deal with his enemies? All right, that's a little better. The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. He's watching over you. And, now watch this, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. Have we seen that? A time on earth unlike no other with so much anguish. I can't, he's saying I can't describe it. Have we seen that? Mm, not even close. Mm -mm. That's how you know it's in the future. No nation has seen this. He says, aren't you glad Michael's there to stand up during that time? Now watch the next line. It's instructive. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Woohoo! I did it for you, okay? <laughs> Everyone, let me say this again. Everyone who is found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth, shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame, and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise, highlight that in your, in your, if you're doing the uh, online Bible, or excuse me, your, your oh, whatever it's called, whatever the software is, Bible app, thank you. Here, let me just kind of, there, good. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now watch this. This is kind of interesting. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Can you imagine if the term the words were taken out and it just said shut up? But you, Daniel, shut up and seal. No, it doesn't say that. Shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the and now watch this. It takes a real, this, set, this takes a radical turn, and I'll, I'll explain what it is. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge. Notice there's a switch out in words. Verses two and three the wise shall shine like stars and lead many. Then there's this other group who are running to and fro at the end, and they're gaining earthly knowledge, okay? But you, Daniel, Shut the words up. Now, what does, that mean? what does that mean to shut the words up? Does that mean hide? It sounds like you're taking something and hiding it somewhere, doesn't it? Seal it up, shut up. He's saying, no, your job, Daniel, was to write what we told you down. It's going to be up for people to responsibly search. The Bible says, if you shall ever surely seek me, shall... I don't know about you, I just want to inform those of you at home that the people sitting here are not excited. And I'm doing the best I can to get them excited. Can I hear a shout out from you guys at home? Wow, they were awesome. Put you guys to shame. There it is. All right. Told you they were excited, right? This is exciting, man. Man, I love it to hear that an archangel's coming to deliver me, that Jesus is coming back, that he's finally done and he's going to put an end to sin. Now, let me just ask you a question. We can sit here and I can make this message sound like, oh, this is a nice, nice thing to really hope for in the future. It would be really nice if Jesus does that, right? Now, wait a minute. First 11 chapters have been proven historically, archaeologically, and biblically. No one has been able to refute this stuff. They've tried, and they have failed 100% of the time. So I put to you before I move one inch forward, if all the 11 other chapters have come true, and Daniel spoke the truth, now I'm talking to you about the future, something we haven't seen yet, can we not agree together that if the other 11 chapters came true, Daniel was right on the money, then this 12th chapter ought to be true as well. 
All right, now let me come back to it. Now that I've given you a more proper foundation, aren't you excited about the future? Because Michael's going to stand up for you and he's going to defend you. Why, it only took half the message to get there. All right, now let's break, the, let's break these verses down just, just a little bit. Here's your first fill-in. I think it's an important one. Daniel 12, 1, bad news for the unbeliever. The minute you hear that Michael's going to stand up, some are going to be raised to everlasting life, some to shame and contempt. That's called judgment day. And it's coming. But that's great news for the Christian, amen? It is. And, and can I just say this? I'm not trying to pick on anybody that's an unbeliever. I'm not trying to judge anybody that's an unbeliever. We've got to go out and try to win the unbeliever. But there's a time where that all stops. God says, you know what? I've had enough. And it's time to separate the two groups now. In the Old Testament, there was a term. And I won't, I won't go into it. It was called the cup of God's wrath. And there were times when God's prophets went to God and say, hey, man, this particular nation, these people, they are out of control. And it's interesting. God said this in the Old Testament. He said, well, the cup of their wrath has not been filled yet, meaning I still want to save them. Because once I pull out my big guns, it's over. I, I mean, let me... Let me just ask you something. I'm not trying to be flippant here. What if Jesus came to you and said, I'd like to show you a tour of hell? First of all, would you take it? I'd be like, <laughs> but, what, but what, what if you could do that? What if you could see the results of unbelief and rejection of God? Uh, I think we'd have a room full of evangelists here. If you could see that, I don't ever, I hope I never see that. But I'm just saying, I warn you all, there is that point in the Old Testament is called the cup of God's wrath. And finally, when the cup of God's wrath would be full, eventually, then God would discipline. He disciplined both Israel and he disciplined their enemies, depending. And, you know, we preach, we preach in the American church, grace, mercy, forgiveness. Those are good things. But I want you to see in Daniel chapter 12, that runs out. And God separates the two groups. And he says, some to life, some to judgment. Hear me if you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you as faithfully as I can, your time is running out. Don't play with him. If the rest of that which I have spoken to you has come true, know this, this is going to come true. And I don't want you to be in that group where your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I plead with you to listen to my case and see if I'm not speaking the truth. Okay? Now, what is the Book of Life? Because the Bible says there's lots of books in heaven. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Go to Revelation 3.5. Because this reveals what it is. Oh, man, one of these days I'm going to have to get the courage up and do a series on Revelation. Would you guys like that? Well, I'm not sure I want to do it. It's too scary. I heard a pastor say one time, every time I do Revelation, I go through it, I get done with this, and there's all this stuff left over that I was never able to get through. So I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Let's finish with this first. Verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the, the book of life. There it is. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Can I hear an amen? amen. Don't you want to hear your name called out? I just have one bit of bad news on that. That must be one big book. And if it's alphabetical, you might have to wait a while. I just want to see if they get the, you know, okay. But no, but in all seriousness, what an amazing book that must be. Verses 2 or 3 now talks about life. Uh, and verse 3 mentions something really interesting. Take a look at verse 3. And I want to go back and look at this. 
Again, because there's these fascinating, those who are wise, okay? Verse two is about rescuing believers, but then it switches. There's an activity here, okay? You really want to zero on that word wise. Here's why. The Bible says this, and maybe you know this verse. The fear of the Lord is the, the beginning of wisdom. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So this group that is here, which is called wise, must have come to understand an important truth. And it has to do with the issue of fearing the Lord. And when I say fear the Lord, I don't mean, oh, please, God, don't smack me. It's he is so awesome and I want to be so reverential and I'm eager to do his will. That's what fear of the Lord is. Okay? All right, I want you to hang on to that because at the very end of this message, I want to unlock that because I think that term wise and the issue of fear of the Lord is the key to the entire book of Daniel. And I've saved it here to the very end. So please, those of you at home, listen into that as well. Okay, so we've got verse 2, we've got verse 3. What is it that they're engaged in? Did you see it there? It says, those who are wise will what? What are they doing? They're winning people to Christ. They will turn many to righteousness, it says. So there's, there's, think of it like dominoes here. There's that domino of fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord leads to wisdom. Wisdom leads to understanding that the unbeliever needs to be saved. Now, I, again, I don't have time to go into this. I know one of the great debates of all Christianity is the rapture. Okay? I can't tell you whether this is us or somebody else, but somebody's around and somebody's soul winning and people have different opinions about that. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't take a tribulation period to have tribulation. You look around the world, if you were in China right now, they'd probably say, what are you talking about? Uh, we, we go to prison for what we believe. I heard a story one time uh, a young pastor from the United States went to China and he was visiting a house church because that's how they meet. That's how they do it. Over 250 million people in house churches. Can you imagine that? And so they got into their group and everybody was together. And the leader of the group looked around and he said, would each of you take a moment and share how you suffered for Jesus today? American minister got real quiet. He didn't want to go. He was like, I don't know. Well, they finally got to him, and he kind of sheepishly said, well, I'm from the United States, and we have religious freedom. So I haven't really suffered. And the small group leader looked at him, and he goes, well, we're going to be praying that you lose your religious freedom so that you'll understand better what it is to be a truly refined believer. Ouch. That must have been hard for him. And that was probably 20 years ago. Just, just a thought. But no matter what's going on, what are we supposed to be doing? Winning souls and igniting revival. I think we're ready for revival in this country. Amen? I really do. Now, you ever seen this? It's thrown on bumper stickers. Okay? Let me, let me put the point up. Okay? Write this down. It's been said, no God, no peace, or no God, no peace, right? Verse 4 really digs into this, and this is what I want you to see, okay? Uh, verses uh, 2 and 3 were great for the believer, but then all of a sudden, remember I told you there's this switch? Now watch this, last half of verse 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book till the time of the end, but... Many, or many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. What are we talking about here? To and fro. Anxiety and depression. 
people unable to solve issues in their life because they're looking in the wrong place. They're not looking in the word of God. They're going for knowledge. There's lots of knowledge, right? You pick this thing up, you can find, here's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Did you know it was still with us? It wasn't just in the Garden of Eden. Is not your software that you use to search Google, DuckDuckGo, that's the newest one, right? Any one of them are a platform of good and evil information. And like a tree planted in the ground with its branches out, that information goes everywhere. The tree of knowledge of good and evil never left us. And we're on it all the time. And if you don't know the word of God, the things in the tree of knowledge of good and evil, if you eat the wrong thing, it'll take you the wrong way. And can lead you into deception. Now this is a large group of people, I think. Maybe the majority of people. But you don't want to be caught up in that group that's running to and fro and trying to figure something out especially at this time in world history. It's not the place you want to be. Amen? Uh -oh, am I laser killing some of you out there? Another wrong thing. Now, some of the most powerful warnings in the Bible come from the book of Romans. By the way, there was a verse back there. I forgot that it was Amos. It's interesting that the prophet Amos said almost word for word. You can go look that up. It says almost as axiom, he said, the people of the earth will lack understanding and will run to and fro looking for it and won't be able to find it. That's the prophet Amos, who's somewhat of a contemporary of Daniel. So that's two prophets saying it. So it must be pretty important. Let me, in fact, let me back that up so you can get that. Make sure you know it. I, I think it's there in your, in your uh, thing. Is it Amos 8.12? Yeah, you can go back and look that up. When you're at home today enjoying your pizza or whatever, go to Amos 8.12. Okay. Romans 1, let's go over there, because this gives us the understanding of why people can't come to Christ. And to be honest with you, it's, it's a little bit frightening when you read these, okay? I just, I, I hate to even like, you know, read these. Romans 1, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to anyway, 21 through 25. These are fascinating to me, but they're almost in, in, a, in a horrific sense. Watch this as Paul describes the condition, the spiritual condition of people. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their what? Thoughts. Knowledge. Okay? And their foolish hearts were darkened, professing to be... There it is, professing to be wise, they actually went for knowledge, okay? They became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Now watch this. This is the hard one to swallow. Therefore, God also gave them up. You don't hear that much in the Bible where God finally says, I've given you up. I can't redeem you. So I gave you over to the uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And I'll just read the first part of that 26 there. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. World's not going to be in good shape at the end. You catch that? Food for thought. But I just want you to see that. Why? Because there is coming a day, and you need to go back over to Daniel chapter 12. There's coming that day where God will say, just like I said, the cup of his wrath is going to say, okay, you continue to sin. You have not listened to me. You have not repented. You don't want a relationship with me. I can see you're not returning. Okay, I'm going to let you go do whatever it is you have in your heart to do but you won't find your way back. Hence, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. They will run to and fro. They will gain knowledge. But then, thinking to be wise, Roman, they will become fools because they will have walked away from eternal life. Don't do that this day. 
time is, as sure as I'm standing here, is not on your side. You don't know what's going to happen this afternoon. So why would you wait? Okay? Boy, it's awful quiet here now. You guys okay? All right. Now, let's go to Daniel 12 and 5 through 13. Let's run through these. We won't take as much time on these. But you still need to see this. I'm going to read these all the way through, and then we'll come back and highlight some things. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this riverbank, the other on that riverbank. And one said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for time, times, and half a time. Anybody know how long that is? Three and a half years. So that's what, 1,095 days, roughly. So part of the tribulation period, the end or the last three and a half years is when all this is going to take place, okay? Okay. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, when God's people are just at their end, boom, God's going to bring it to an end. And all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Now watch what he tells Daniel here. Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand it, but the who? The wise will understand it. And from that time, or from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Now notice some days were added there. Okay? Blessed is he who waits to come to... Now watch this, here comes another number. To 1,335 days. He adds some. Why is God adding days here? Don't you want it to be over? Right? If you're in the tribulation, Lord, what do you mean another 45 days? I'll tell you why. It doesn't say that, but I'm going to tell you why. That's how much God loves people. Even at the end, he was like, I'll give them a few more days. Just a few more. Let's see. Man, that's a God of true love. When somebody is acting as wicked as humanly possible, deserving of judgment. God says, give him a few more days. God's people, be patient, be patient, be patient. Because when their time is up, their time is up. I mean, what a God of, that's where I see God's grace and mercy. But now watch what it says. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. All right, let's just break down those last verses real quickly here. Verses 5 and 6, there's angels on the scene again. And did you notice something about them? They didn't know the future any more than you and I did. God doesn't reveal it to everybody. He reveals what he wants to reveal. But here you see that even angels have to wait. And they say, how long? And then someone comes along and gives them an answer. It says, the man in lemon, in lemon, in linen, we talked about him before, right? Who do you think that is? I heard one, Jesus, I'm good with that because that's who I think it is. But then there's something here in verses 7 through 9. You ever ask this question? Why God? Why God were things allowed to happen in my life this way? Ever felt that way? Yes, no? People at home? Okay, thank you. I just want you to see some. Daniel, Daniel, with all of his wisdom, still doesn't get everything that God's doing either. And Daniel's sitting there going, wait a minute, wait a minute, what about this, what about this, what about this? God says, go your way. You don't need to worry about it. It's about the future. It's not about you. It's about the future. Can you figure out the future? I know there are some people, they usually have signs out in front of their businesses with a little hand up. They come on in and get your palm read. They somehow think they can predict the future. Well, if God tells you you can't, anybody that does that kind of thing, man, they're just, they're just cheating you. Amen. 
But I'll just tell you, man, if Daniel doesn't understand everything, neither are you going to either. So guess what we need to do? We need to kind of go our own way, be watching for these things, but understand we have, how much control do we have over the future? Absolutely none. All right, let's jump to verse 10 because I love this. Remember I told you that kind of harsh statement in chapter 4. It says people will run to and fro, right? And knowledge will increase. Look at what verse 10 says. It comes right back. And from the time that the day, or no, excuse me, that's verse 11. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. There's verse 4 all over again. See, catch that? The wise will understand. Why? Because you'll go and look for it, and it won't be sealed up and hidden from you. C3, 21st century, got the book of Daniel open. It's not sealed up to us. It's open to us because we're looking for it. Amen? Wasn't hidden for those who are looking for it. And then there comes this controversial statement in verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Now, we talked about this before. Did not a leader named Antiochus Epiphanes come along, move into the temple, set up the god Zeus, and that changed and stopped the daily sacrifices, right? He did all that. Well, some Christians say this is just nothing more than the fulfillment of that. But if we're talking about the future here, which I believe we are, then it means something that you can keep your eye out for. And that would be the rebuilding of the temple. Did you know in Israel there's a group called the Temple Society, and they're just waiting for the opportunity to do that? You say, well, what's the holdup? Well, you have to look at the geography. Right downtown in Jerusalem, right near the Dome of the Rock, Muslim's second highest holy place. Uh, that's not happening without a holy war right now. Now, I don't think it stands right on the same spot as where the temple is, but I think the temple is near there. But let me just issue this to you, a news flash. If you see so much as a shovel of dirt turned over in Israel on behalf of this, you go right back to Daniel and say, yep, read about it. Got to be a temple to desecrate the temple, Right? Now, the whole thing about sacrifices, I can't imagine that one. Because you're talking about back in the day, they used to sacrifice cattle all the way down to doves. That place was just flowing with blood from sacrifices. I can't imagine that, them doing that. But that doesn't mean that there won't be some type of daily sacrifices that they don't stop. So I believe the temple will be rebuilt. And this person known as the Antichrist will say, well, how will you know? That's the sign that you'll be able to see. Okay. You with me? All right, let's talk about, I think I already much, pretty much talked about verse 11. So let's move on. This is what I want you to see is the very end. Let me just read this, 12 and 13. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,345 days, or 35 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to you inheritance at the end of days. Do you realize right here before Jesus ever came to earth that he's getting the same promise that you and I got? Go your way and rest and I promise you you'll rise at the last day. Isn't that beautiful? Daniel's getting that. Now, Daniel was promised eternal life. So are you. Romans 10.9 makes it about as clear as you can get. You believe with your mouth and confess with your heart that Jesus is Lord. Have you done that today? If you already have, let me remind you of something that's important. If you've already done that, then there's something out. How many of you recognize these guys? Are they familiar to you? Some say yes, some say no. Probably the younger generation, maybe not. They're known as Penn and Teller. They're a very famous Las Vegas magic act and comedy act. They've had several TV shows. I had the chance to meet them. When I was working up at CNN, they came on, they were on Larry King Live. Very, very cordial, very nice guys. But the taller guy, Penn Gillette, is an avowed atheist. He can't stand Christianity and has made that very clear. One time they were doing a show and they brought up a guy to do one of their magic tricks, whatever that was. The guy turned out to be a Christian. And when the show was done, the guy came up and he had a little, you ever seen those little like mini Bibles that have just like the Psalms in them? 
I think he had one of those, and he took out and he wrote in there, and he, he went up the pen and he said, I really want to give this to you. And he goes, I want you to know, I want to thank you for your, your performance tonight, but I really want you to have this book of Psalms. And he goes, I would like to pray for you. And Penn Gillette said, that's fine, thank you very much. Well, he was asked about that later on in, in an interview. I think he actually did a video. You can probably find his video talking about that on YouTube. And he said this, he said, I really, really appreciate that that guy, even though he goes, I'm an absolute atheist and that guy wasn't going to impact me or change my mind at all, but I'm so glad he gave me the scripture. He said, I can't say that for a lot of other Christians who would not even, and he goes, people I know that wouldn't even take the time to tell me about Jesus. And he goes, isn't that what you're supposed to do if you're a Christian? Even though you know I'm going to reject it, isn't that what you're supposed to do? He goes, you must hate me a lot if you're a Christian and you don't tell me the good news. And that is the last thing you want to hear from an unbeliever. You must hate me a lot if you don't take the time to tell me the good news. Now, I told you there was a key that unlocks this door, I believe, to the whole book of Daniel as I close this out. You still with me? All right, listen to me here. Daniel chapter 1. A teenager makes a decision that changes the trajectory of his life. What's that decision? Very simple, to fear the Lord. He said, I will not eat food from the king's table and defile myself. In other words, there were two fears, two options. I could fear the king who could put me to death or I can fear the Lord who can save my life. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to Nebuchadnezzar, it doesn't matter what you do to us. We fear the Lord more than we do that oven. And it's interesting that that brought Jesus on the scene and deliverance. They tried to get to Daniel by changing one of the decrees that was set before Darius. And if you'll remember, Darius signed off. The law was if you don't worship Darius, you go to the lion's den. Daniel had two more options. Which option did he choose? To fear the Lord over the fear of the lions. And he was delivered. And you see throughout the book of Daniel, Daniel always consistently makes that choice. If you're with somebody and you're too afraid to tell them about Jesus or say something, then you too have the fear option. You either fear the rejection of that person or you fear the Lord. Which one are you going to choose? Now I ask you, my Bible tells me that we're supposed to be living in a time where the exploits that the church does is supposed to be greater than what Jesus did himself. Now why isn't that happening? I think we get some measure of the Holy Spirit. But can I just say this? The church in the United States has had to turn to marketing to try to accomplish its goals. And I'm not totally against marketing. Don't get me wrong, some great marketing people out there I've talked to. But where is the power of the Holy Spirit to change and transform hundreds, if not thousands, maybe millions of lives? Where is the Holy Spirit when it comes to healing? Where is the Holy Spirit when it comes to deliverance? I'm not seeing it. All I can say is this. I want to make the same decision Daniel did, which is to fear the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. Do you remember what happened to Daniel when he made that decision? Do you go back and read Daniel chapter 1? Did it tell you about the level of wisdom he had when he made that? It says his wisdom became exponential. Ten times his wisdom was increased. So much so that a teenager could influence a king. Now, we got a room full of you here today. Should we not pray for that same spirit? A holy fear 
that will fall upon us and help us do the things that I think Jesus has been waiting to do, but he can't because we're too afraid of the world. Uh Uh-oh, must be time to wrap up. (laughs) Can I pray that with you? I don't know about you, I'm tired of just, just church. And I'm not saying we've done anything wrong, I think we've done some good stuff, but it's, I don't know how else to say that, just be transparent with you. It's not enough for me. What I call the status quo, it's not enough to fulfill me and fill my heart. And I can't blame God for any of this. I can only look in the mirror and say, what are you doing wrong? And I realize, man, I don't always fear you like I should and have reverence like I should. And I need your humility because that's what led Daniel to where he was. Let's pray for that right now. Can you, will you join me? Will you stand to your feet? Wake up. Woo! And let's pray that God will bless us with a spirit of holy fear and awe and reverence. Amen? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for our audience at home, and I thank you for the group that is here. Father, we want to commit ourselves to accomplishing all that you wanted to do. I just believe you've been waiting, Lord God, for some of us to say we will not follow the world. We will not be afraid of the world. We will be more fearful of you. And we will honor you with our choices and our decisions from here on out. Father, send your Holy Spirit like you did in Acts chapter 2. We pray, we beg. because we will never, ever see that kind of power unless we're willing to give up our own selfish ways, humble ourselves before you. And I start with myself. I cannot point my finger at one other person except myself. And I'm asking you, Lord God, to send your spirit again. Give us another chance, Lord God. We want to serve you that way so that we might be that light that shines in the darkness at the end. And I give you all the praise and all the glory. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone together said...